The Irish have always been a globalised tribe, emigrating, working, setting up businesses all over the world. Now, in the past, we had to go away to create things, but now we don't have to go away anymore. Irish entrepreneurs can set up wherever they want, invest in whatever country they want, and play on the global stage. Now we're going to recognise the Irish entrepreneurs who have embraced the globe. Grafton was founded by James Kilban in 82 and is Ireland's largest recruitment company. They have offices in 18 countries and a database of 750,000 candidates. I was a medical student in Galway and got lucky in London and uh, I suppose that's where a little bit of entrepreneurship comes in. Um, despite the fact that my mother really never forgave me for not having a doctor in the family, um, I went into this business when I was uh, in my early 20s. Our business now is, is spread around the world and we really make a big difference to people's lives through work, whether it's a student coming in for the first time into our offices in Dublin or Belfast or the same in, in Santiago and Chile, uh, to a returning housewife. Those are the things that make it work for us. Michael Dawson's gift voucher shop offers a comprehensive range of gift vouchers available online and at post offices. They can be used in 25,000 locations. There's a bit of entrepreneurialism in everybody, but I think the difference is that the entrepreneurs actually go and do something about it. Everybody loves you when you're successful, uh, but when you're on your way up, uh, it's very, very hard to get support. And uh, some of your ideas, some of your projections, people look at them and say, you know, that they're just not, it's not possible to achieve them. But you know, on the basis that you're just not going to give up, that you will achieve them. I've had some amazing successes, some disastrous failures as well, but uh, I think at this stage more success is now than, than failures. With Daryl Ishmael's online reservation company, Chase International, customers can book holidays or access an innovative service for researching and booking medical procedures online. The buzz that I get is actually from the ability to use my energy and enthusiasm into projects and, and see them right to completion and uh, watch them grow. The challenges always come in everything uh, in, in life, you know, whether it's business or personal life. And I think the, the whole idea is to have a positive outlook in challenges. You see the, the challenge and then from that uh, you work out the solution and from the solution you find the opportunity. And I think that would be how I would look at things. The oil crisis of the 70s inspired Stephen Grant to produce a more efficient central heating boiler. Today, Grant Engineering have a dominant market position and an annual turnover of 40 million. Well, when I started my business, it was very tough because it was in the late 70s when money was very expensive. Banks wouldn't give me money, so I had to start by just making one product at a time and developing step by step. At this time now, we have 60% of the UK market with our condensing boiler and another great achievement was winning an award in London in 2003 for the same condensing boiler. This is the, they call it the Oscars of the heating industry. The Oscars of the heating industry. I wonder, Stephen, who's the Scarlett Johansson of the heating industries? Let's move on and meet our next four global players. David Renane's shipping company, Mainport, has grown from two to almost 30 vessels, with on- and offshore operations from the Caspian Sea to South Africa. We are competing against some of the really largest shipping companies in the world. Um, we're certainly larger clout than we have and better financing arrangements than we have. But maybe we're smaller, we can move a bit faster. We can respond to customers' needs by giving them exactly maybe what they want in a spec of a vessel. The best or biggest lesson I learned in business is try to remain positive. We've had situations that things went wrong, and don't get down when things go wrong. Not everything goes right. Most of the interesting stories that we have are the ones that didn't go as well as they should have had. And keep going forward and uh, work hard and have fun. Galwegian Gerard Barry heads up Fintrax, a financial services company that processes tourist tax refunds and multi-currency credit card payments. The sun never sets in our business, so we are an international company. We are based in a place where the staff are terrific, they're loyal, they're hardworking, and um, that is a tremendous asset. Merely being nominated, I think it's probably a recognition of what my company and my people and my organisation has achieved, and I think that's very, very heartening uh, in its own right. But it's great to see how Ireland has come on and has so many young entrepreneurs um, 
It's fascinating, it's terrific, and long may it last, and I hope it builds more. In 2001, Sir Alan Maclay established Almac, his second world-beating pharmaceutical company. Almac employs 2,000, supplying services from diagnostics to the finished product. I don't drive people. People will drive me. And it's funny how you can think of an idea after you've sat round a table and you might claim it as your own, but fundamentally it's probably seeds that somebody else has planted in your head. I always say there's four P's in business. The first P is uh, people. The second is product, the third is presentation, and the fourth is professionalism. You get those four in business, you're going to be successful. I'll take the fifth P, profit. Liam Casey offers a gateway to China. PCH China Solutions designs, engineers and delivers more than 200 million bespoke components for international companies. I think Chinese entrepreneurs, when they start a business, immediately they're thinking global. You know, when I started in PCH, in 96, at first I was thinking about the Irish market. It took me a couple of years before I realized that, you know, once we were manufacturing the product in China, it didn't matter where we shipped it to. We now even have clients in China. I've never seen myself as an entrepreneur. I think it's probably just a fancy name for somebody who gets things done. Now to announce the winner of the international category, please welcome to the stage Mr. Robert Gallagher of Ulster Bank. Ireland's most talented entrepreneurs have built remarkable businesses at home and abroad. On the global stage, they have competed fearlessly and won, and I commend their spirit and courage. The winner of the 2007 International Entrepreneur of the Year is Liam Casey. Seeing opportunity in China where many only saw obstacles, Liam Casey has earned himself the title of International Entrepreneur of the Year. Thank you very much. Um, this is not an award for an individual. It's a team award. And uh, so for all the team, thank you. <laughs> and very importantly, there's a bunch of people that I have to thank. And that's the families of the people in PCH. Thank you for your support. We couldn't do it without you. for tonight's second winner, Mr. Liam Casey, ladies and gentlemen. Big round of applause.